Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading is a free course download for increasing your confidence and your ability to execute your trading edge in live time. The link for the download is in the description box below. And the free audio program, the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders is also a free download to develop your discipline, your confidence, and a winning mindset to master the markets. Again, the download for these links is in the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. As I mentioned, traders, uh, all these videos are in the playlist uh, discussing the templates, the levels, the timings, the behavior of price, the daily templates. Everything you need to know is in this playlist. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're going to talk about day three Wednesday trades and the basic templates. Candidates that set up on day three, knowing which ones to avoid. One of the key things is understanding what you are looking for. Uh, as we have talked about in every video, you're either going to get a day three trend trade continuing in the direction of where that market's been moving, or you will be looking for a day three reversal trade. Now, the other thing to understand is whether or not the instrument that you're looking at is even set up. So the object is to find the best setups. Now, some instruments are going to have enough volatility that traders will be able to perhaps uh, participate in one move. Uh, and some of the indexes, oil, gold, they have enough volatility that uh, there are trades uh, sometimes just within the hour itself. We had major red news at 8.30 and then Bank of England governor uh, later at 10.05 a.m., which affected some of the currency pairs. Uh, but we'll look at the indexes first, and uh, the ones that were moving prior to the U.S. session were the NASDAQ and the S&P. Uh, DJ30 moving, but in a different manner. Coming back to day one, day two, day three, well, we're looking for the parabolic opportunity. Now, we had a lot of movement on day two yesterday on uh, several instruments, and we'll look at those as well. But Understanding that uh, we're in the end of a month, we're starting December in a couple of days, and it's not unusual to see these moves uh, exploding towards the end of a month or at the beginning of a month, as we talked about. And we'll look at the daily charts as well. Now, looking at the NASDAQ, uh, we're looking at the previous week's high, which is also the high of the month. Uh, this pair, this is a 15-minute chart if we just zoom out now. Monday, day one, was an outside day. So an outside day is a day that breaks both the high and low of the day. Uh, and so you have a large range day. Uh, that's our opening range for the week. We had a market that broke Friday's low before reversing and taking out the high of Friday. And that formed an outside day, day one. Day two was an inside day. And that was also a first green day. First green day is a day that closes above the open and ideally forms a peak formation low first. And forming a peak formation high after. So going down and reversing and closing above the opening price. This was an inside day. That inside day was broken at the beginning of Wednesday in our Asian session. Now remember, I'm coming to the screen for the US session, New York window. 9.30 a.m. is when the indexes open. So there are traders who will participate earlier in the day. They may trade indexes in Asia or London. I only look at the indexes at 9.30 New York time. So 9.30 is when the yellow box starts. And we'll just zoom out here again. We have high of the month. We're on day three. We've taken out the high of the month. And when the market opens, we've talked about this previously, uh, it will often take traders into the extreme uh, getting traders to chase that momentum and perhaps uh, with the belief that that's going to explode and continue to move. We get to the end of that hour. Now, I've talked about uh, the only time that I will be looking to go to a one-minute chart is when I'm at the extreme or if I'm already inside an existing coil that is moving from one side of a previous day's level to the other. So, for example, London could put in a peak formation low. We could get a coil heading into uh, our New York window that's going to go to the other side of the range in a parabolic trend trade or reversal. Uh, but that is the only time I will go to a one-minute chart is when we are outside or when I'm in an existing coil on a longer time frame setup. This is a five-minute chart. And just showing this large 
candle, the engulfment candle. This large engulfment candle is the first five minutes of the third hour. So we have 8 to 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m., the market goes vertical and breaks the high of the month. One, two, three bullish candles. We've talked about the high bull in the playbook. Several traders took this trade, but once it's on the outside, we're up here. We have our New York Open going vertical. The beginning of the third hour is when we get our large engulfment, and this is no different than a first bar trade. Remember what a first bar trade is after major red news or even on the open of a session on an explosive market like the indexes. It traps all of the volume above and as Peter Brandt would call this a pattern within a pattern, a rectangle up top for the reversal, an explosive reversal on day three. Now remember, uh, day three we're looking for either a trend trade or the reversal trade. So there are traders that are going to be looking to take this with the trend. On the breakout. Now, as I've stated previously, if you take this on the trend trade, once that market breaks out on day three, we're at the high of the month, the high of the week, the high of the day, the high of the session. Understand when you need to lock in the profits. 30 minutes working the high, a break in structure, a first bar engulfment right at the beginning of the third hour, two minutes into the third hour. So, so important to understand the rotation of time, a new hour, one hour up, two hours up, breaking out, and then reversing in the third hour for easy, free cash after major red news. Another giveaway is volume caught up high, up high. If we just back this up, this is our one minute chart. You'll notice, and we've talked about this repeatedly, we'll go to the five minute how, the, volume, how the, the price ramps up. That's a dead giveaway. It's ramping up to blow off in the direction of the trend on day three. So you can participate in that parabolic explosion and understand to lock in the money. And if you're going to be taking that reversal, you got a one bar stop up top or at the extreme. Traders can get aggressive on this. This is a five star reversal setup. Ramp volume. 15 minutes blowing off in the direction of the trend of the New York Open. 15 more minutes locking in the high. One push, two push, three pushes on the outside of the high of the month. New hour starts, engulfment for the collapse back inside down to not only the breakout level from the high of the previous day, but the closing price level from Tuesday. High of month to closing price level. Now somebody asked me uh, what a well-engineered template is. So remember uh, the levels that we're talking about. Now we don't have the high of month level visible on here. We'll put that on. Now a well-engineered chart will show us often three levels of rise or fall. We have level one. That's the consolidation between the previous day's high and closing price level. So if we just project that across this forms a consolidation that can be our level one. The market proceeds to auction up into level two, which takes us up to the high of the month level. That's our level two. Level three blows off in the direction of the trend before we get our reversal and the collapse back down to closing price. Now this market is about to, or just has closed below the open, and this will now give us a first red day. This is one of the reasons why I talk about sitting on your hands and waiting. Uh, often traders, you can feel this momentum. They want to, they want to participate in that explosive move. And often that's the, the risky part because they could drop this down prior to, uh, the New York open or on the New York open. So you're getting in there. It looks like it's going to blow off. It does blow off, but the safe bet is outside of the range. No more major red news. Uh, and then the market is open and we get our reversal outside for the easy collapse back down. Now, coming back to understanding what is asymmetrical risk reward. Asymmetrical risk reward is looking at even the breakout level. But if you're targeting closing price, the idea is this. I want to risk one R up top for potentially five or ten R on the way back down. That's how you grow a small account 
into a large account by targeting asymmetrical risk reward instead of taking 10 little piker trades taking one or two parabolic opportunities a week that can be scaled into and held for explosive moves whether they're reversal or trend trades on Wednesday day three or Friday now we're often going to get other opportunities on other days but Wednesday Friday day one day two day three Wednesday will reset and become our new day one heading into our closing range of the week day one day two and free cash Friday day three now we're looking at West Texas oil and uh, again understand I'm coming to the screen for the New York session uh, prior to the New York session West Texas had cleared out the previous Wednesday's high uh, Wednesday's our reset day day one day two day three heading into our closing range of the week and that started our new week off when Tuesday broke the high of the day on oil when Tuesday broke the high of the day that confirmed our peak formation low on Monday day one it's our day one anyways a new new week new timing cycle day one day two breakout traders in the market day three blowing off in the direction of the trend going vertical outside of the previous day's high uh, so remember when a market breaks out similar to what we just saw on the Nasdaq it's outside even though it hadn't broken the, the high of the month on the Nasdaq it's in play we have a market that's gone vertical outside of the previous day's range now what's important to understand about this you've heard me say before if a market dumps down before a session begins or if it pumps up before a session begins so in this particular case if the market begins dumping down meaning that we're going to open our session down inside of this high and low of the current day think dump and pump now there's nothing wrong with traders participating in this we were already broken out the market had taken out the previous uh, high of Wednesday in the previous week which was our midpoint range of the week but we also had an engulfment of a high bull prior to our US session so we've locked in a high potential we have a peak formation high we're dumping down it's day three thesis being that we may be going on a parabolic reversal from after hitting the high of the week the high of the day and collapsing into our session now we had engulfment pin hammer this is at the beginning of our New York open window uh, 9 30 a.m. New York time now if we put our universal EMA inside understanding uh, we're targeting asymmetrical risk reward thesis being we're targeting the low of the day so we have an opportunity here where breakout traders are in the market we may now be targeting the low of the day this is at the New York open itself we've already hit the high of the week we're reversing back inside the market comes down into the breakout from Tuesday's US session so London had put a high in place New York went parabolic on day two we'll just lower this down and this is a 15 minute chart so when we come down timing understanding timing new hour but also the behavior of price uh, you hear me repeat this over and over again timings levels behavior of price so we have a market that's gone parabolic inside from the peak formation in the New York open one two three 15 minute candles that's a one two three and a pin hammer now we don't know if that market's going to continue to collapse or not but what we do understand is that when it gets down to this breakout level so we just back this up for one second uh, understand we had a peak formation low made at the New York open on the previous day so I talk about peak formations especially in US markets indexes gold oil I will pay particular attention to the high and low of the day levels in this particular case the US session if we project this through this level may be significant now we traded down into that peak formation so one of the phrases that I often repeat to traders is are they working the high or are they working the low now we've put a peak formation low and gone vertical on day two breakout traders in the market we've continued to go higher which tells us that the high of the day is not yet in place we took out previous Wednesday's high but we did not take over weekly highs or or monthly highs and the market 
blew off from the inside on the New York Open back into traders that were long from Tuesday's U.S. session. And what do we get? We get an engulfment and another engulfment. This is a five-minute chart. Engulfment, pin hammer. We'll look at the one-minute chart in a moment here. This forms a micro W structure at the low of the day. So high of the day, at some point, we're going to get a low of the day put in place. The third hour starts. We get an engulfment, a retest, another engulfment, 30 minutes into the third hour. So I will repeat the phrase again, 30 to 45 minutes. One hour, two hours, third hour forms our reversal into where breakout traders and the peak formation low of Tuesday's New York session occurred. A dump and pump template on day three. So I want to emphasize the importance of day three. It's not Monday. It's not our opening range. It's not Tuesday. It's not day two. It's day three. And this is when we can see price behave like this. They've come back into uh, long traders from Tuesday's New York session before exploding and reversing in the third hour after taking out stops from Tuesday's longs. So now we'll look at the one minute chart as I just emphasized on the NASDAQ. I will only look for this behavior on the one minute chart at the extremes. So a lot of people are marking off all these swing highs and swing lows. This market broke out. It was in play. It reversed at the New York Open into traders that were long. The third hour begins. The importance of timings is critical. A new hour. Other time frame traders are driving those moves. So we come down. We have an engulfment, a retest collapse, a third push and engulfment 39 minutes into our third hour. 30 to 45 minutes. Are they working the high or are they working the low? We're back inside of our universal EMA and the market explodes back in the long direction. A one bar stop. This is on the one minute. The five minute chart is the same. We can go back to that in a moment. A one bar stop because we've now created a short squeeze template, a triple bottom at the low of the day with our timing cycle intact into breakout traders and the peak formation low from Tuesday's New York open window. If we go back and look. We have our explosive reversal, and as I've mentioned, when you're at extremes on a reversal trade, you are not going to get a, an EMA that will match that unless you're on the smallest time frame. So we get our explosion back. They take out not only the high of the New York Open, they continue back to the high of the day on West Texas oil. Oh, we're looking at the Swiss franc. We'll just zoom out uh, day one. So we have our Monday. Day one breaks the low of... Friday, that's our day one. We continue with day two, breaking out on Tuesday. And we get to day three, a little lower low. And heading into our New York window, we had a peak formation that had pumped up to closing price level. Peak formation high. This is a 15-minute chart. If we put our universal EMA on this chart, heading into our New York open, we have a nice clean engulfment at the low of day level. So remember timings, levels, behavior, price. This is a 15 minute chart again. So uh, finessing this perhaps on a shorter time frame. the objective uh, on any of this, regardless of whether it's a five minute or a 15 minute is to be filled at or better than the level. Thesis being the market is going to collapse down or continue to move down. Uh, obviously, there was some reaction from on several instruments uh, on the Bank of England governor uh, remarks at 10.05 a.m., but this market did complete one full range expansion down. So obviously, uh, traders may have felt there was a bit of heat, but they have their one bar stop. There's actually nothing uh, that defied that. I uh, wasn't aware that uh, this was going to be as volatile. Uh, most currency pairs did show a wick. Uh, but just in terms of the template itself, day one, day two, day three, continuing in the direction of the trend, a trend trade on the Swiss franc. Day one, day two, day three for a range expansion of closing price and low of day. The reason why that is, 
is that that is where our consolidation occurred throughout the day. That's our rectangle. And once that market gave our entry for the range expansion thesis, obviously that Bank of Governor, Bank of England governor's comments affected the currency short term before collapsing in the intended direction, completing one full range expansion of our rectangle. Gold on day three, uh, we broke the high of the day. So just coming back to the simple template, Monday day one was a breakout. Friday's high of day, day one. Day two went vertical parabolic in the direction of that original breakout. Day one, day two continuing in the beginning of the new day on Wednesday before collapsing down. Now, one of the thesis that I had heading into our major red news was that closing price would act as a 50% level for a potential move down on major red news back into breakout traders from Tuesday's New York window. So prior to the news, my thesis on this pair was uh, day three. We had a peak formation made at the beginning of the day and a lower peak formation high in Asia. Now remember, I've come to the screen after London has broken down heading into our new window. So we have a peak formation, lower peak formation high, and a peak formation low made in the London window. Peak formation low, peak formation high. We had major red news at 8.30. This creeping trend up, creeping trend up, the escalator up, uh, gave me the thesis that we may see a collapse back down, at least to the low of the day, or into our peak formation low, which is at our 75 level. So the other thing to notice was that as we were breaking down, we made lower peak formation high highs in the London session, peak formation high, peak formation high, a little triple top before continuing down. The market traded up into that just prior to the news release, uh, prelim GDP. And I want to repeat, uh, trading the news is not the modus operandi. It's trading in line with a larger time frame setup. Uh, so this is prior to our New York Open. Uh, as I repeat with traders, if you're not experienced with trading gold or you're uh, not consistent with it, step back, stick to the bigger picture. This is a news momentum catalyst opportunity. So we have news released at 8.30 and we have a market that's gone up and engulfed on the news candle. Now this pin, this pin is almost a dead giveaway every time for those of you who normally uh, follow the gold trade or the post news trade. Uh, this pin is a dead giveaway. What they're doing is getting traders chasing this move with the belief that this is going to continue up because there's been a pin. That traps traders up top into, remember our levels, our high of day level that we broke out from. If we just back this up for a second on our five minute chart and our peak formation high made in the London session. We've got all this low hanging fruit, low hanging fruit on our escalator going into our news catalyst opportunity. As I repeat, if you trade gold or you trade the news, uh, do so at your own risk. Uh, this is really only for experienced traders. The opportunity was to get filled at or near or best fill above closing price if that opportunity presented with a thesis that this market was going to potentially not only go to the pin, take out traders from the pin, but maybe collapse down through for our measured move opportunity. As I mentioned earlier, just uh, on that, if I back this up, closing price, we have our space. They went up and made a new high. Sometimes closing price will represent 50% of the range and that collapse on day three would have brought us back into breakout traders from the New York session on Tuesday. The other thing to be aware of is that as this market collapses and we approach that low, we're heading now into 30 to 45 minutes of the end of the hour. And we may see that market put in a low. The, there's a couple of, of situations to consider. Maybe they will pump it back up into the New York Open for the collapse, or maybe it won't collapse at all, which is why when we get down here on a news catalyst opportunity, I will nail and bail. This market should have collapsed as we follow this down lower. As I've talked about, I will often trail something because of this explosive situation where we can see this market explode back against a move and lose profits. So as a market's collapsing down, 
There's 40 to 50 pips of opportunity there. Lock in the money and be prepared for potentially a New York Open opportunity. Now, what we did see is this market traded into that peak formation low. So again, coming back to the phrase, are they working the high or are they working the low? We have a higher high. We made higher highs heading into the news catalyst without taking out the peak formation high of London. And we also have our traders who are short up top from our Asian peak formation collapse. You'll notice that we have, just draw this in for traders. We've had a peak formation and we have come down from this level above London, one level, two levels, three levels of from the low of the day. So we made a peak formation high in the first hour, a peak formation low. As I commented, the uh, first hour puts in a low and a high. They trade back into the low, pin down before retesting and engulfing another pin. And just prior to our New York open window, we have a nice coil, a short squeeze coil for an explosive parabolic move up through the highs of London and into our lower level shorts from the Asian window. This was an easy free cash parabolic reversal trade on the New York Open. News catalyst, a nail and bail, and a parabolic reversal squeeze trade, short squeeze trade, into lower level shorts on Wednesday, day three. So important again to understand once we clear out these levels, new hour beginning, a new hour beginning and I will be locking in the money. When I'm in this situation and I'm on a one minute chart, any any sort of reversal type behavior, that's it, the trade is over, a little bar, engulfment, whatever that may be, locking in the money and getting off the screen. Looking at the Euro Yen, this was another pair that gave a nice clean template for a day three continuation trade. So we're talking about day one, breaking out of the low of Friday, day one, day two, continuing that move. So day one, day two, day three breaks out prior to our Asia session window and then begins a reversal. Now, when we're inside of these high and low levels, closing price and low of day, we're inside. And so as I've repeated, we're either looking for a compression for a short squeeze reversal or a pump and dump trend continuation. So if it's a reversal, we're gonna get the dump, dump, dump for the explosive short squeeze. But if it's trend continuation, we're going to get a pump and dump type of template. We've made a lower low and then they've began to pump it up from the inside. As our US session begins, we're up top. They break down on the inside from closing price, putting a high of the day in place peak formation high in our London uh, just prior to our US session in our London gap time lower low and that begins our pump on major red news now we'll just we'll blow this up again this is a five minute chart I'll just change that we'll zoom in here so traders can see this remember levels so if, if I'm not at a level and I'm not getting a pump and dump or a dump and pump template whether that's a trend trade or a reversal trade. Uh, so you can go back and look at several pairs. We're not at the high or the low when the New York session begins. There were moves later in the day out, outside of the 12 candle window, but these ones specifically relate to levels, timings, and the behavior of price. So we get a, a pump after major red news, a second pump after major red news, and a third pump after major red news, and engulfment and a little pin hammer 10 minutes prior to our, our uh, New York open window. And then the just the other little engulfment right here. We'll just highlight this for traders to see. Off the closing price level for a short trade back through the low of the day. Put our universal EMA on there. Timings, levels, behavior of price. They are pumping it back up into the peak formation high into closing price level for a nice parabolic collapse back to the low of the day and the low of the week. Uh, the risk on this trade, close of this bar is approximately 09. The high is at 14. We're looking at you know 10, 15 pip stop max. And that low of the day level is targeting 54. So we're looking at 
50 pips, so 5 to 1 opportunity. We'll just back this up onto our 50-minute chart. Uh, remember, we're inside. They come, came down. They continued to go lower. They've put a low of the day in place before beginning the pump. Large uh, candles. We had a Euro news at 3 a.m. New York time. The break in structure on the inside. Major red news pumping back up. This is a 15-minute uh, chart, but right at our New York open, the engulfment and the collapse back down to the low of the day. Day one, day two, day three, if we just back this up. Continuing in the direction of the trend. So, for example, if we look at the euro, we have day one, day two, day three pushes higher before breaking down inside. But we're inside. There's no trend trade setup. There's no reversal trade setup. We have a market that's just auctioning. It pumps up. Auctions back down into the low on major red news. Pumps up on New York open. Auctions right back down into the low of the day. So, effectively, a messy trading range not an ideal well-engineered template the uh, dj30 the market uh, as we talked about started to give our three levels of rise uh, before reversing on major red news so the 8 30 a.m news candle gave a nice little pin hammer engulfment that started to break down that was our break in structure the new york open was volatile inside of that high and low before creeping down into our low of the Asian session. Engulfing. And a pin hammer. So we'll zoom in on this. Engulfment pin hammer. This is a 15 minute chart right here. And this is later in the session. So this is uh, into the fourth hour. But timings, levels, behavior, price. Outside of my timing window before pumping back up. In one push, two pushes, and three pushes engulfing before collapsing down and then finding major support again at that same level. Consolidating sideways late in the day. Pin hammer, another pin hammer for an explosive reversal into the close of the day. So I like the other two indexes better. They were outside of the high of the month, high of the week, high of the day, high of the session for parabolic reversals right at our New York open 15 minutes through the high 15 minutes locking the high end third hour began for the collapse right back down we'll just shoot back to the Nasdaq so we opened up went vertical outside as opposed to being inside of the high and the low and auctioning down for in three pushes one push two pushes one two three engulfment pin hammer explosive reversal uh, some traders may have stuck around for that before collapsing back down later. So plenty of volatility on a day three free cash Wednesday. But looking for well-engineered charts, working from the levels, avoiding uh, markets that are inside unless they trade to a, an extreme. And only then will I go to a one-minute chart. So we take a look at the S&P. Uh, the difference, again, being that this market formed a nice, well-engineered chart, opened up outside of the high of the month before pumping higher rate right at the New York Open. This is a 15-minute chart. We'll go to a 5-minute, very similar to the NASDAQ, or outside of the high of the month. To zoom in on this. Our third hour begins. We get an engulfment of the entire structure. This is on the 5-minute chart for the parabolic collapse not only to the high of day breakout but to the closing price level in our timing window for easy free cash on a parabolic Wednesday reversal look at our one minute chart our New York open continues to work higher we get a little micro M structure this is the only time I will go to the one minute chart is when I'm outside or at the extremes of the high or the low of the day we get our little M structure Third hour begins one minute, two minutes into our third hour. Here's our here's our risk on the trade. Anything up top, that's the max risk on this trade. Timings, levels, behavior of price. This market at a minimum should go 30 to 45 minutes to complete the move. So some traders may uh, take profits or they may hold on for the entire move with the uh, thesis that this market should retrade back to closing price level. Go to our five minute timings, levels, behavior of price, ramped up volume. Anybody up top here, you can almost guarantee that they're going to go after the money. 
pulling back before collapsing and going parabolic to the closing price level on day three S&P 500. If we go back to our 15 minute chart, the important thing to understand here, we'll just scrunch this up. Day one, day two, that's our opening range, initial balance and outside day, similar to what we saw on uh, the NASDAQ. Day one, day two, day three, a parabolic reversal opportunity. These are opportunities that, uh, you know, again, free cash Wednesday, free cash Friday. But our jobs as traders is to hunt out the best instrument, not trying to trade movement on any instrument, looking for the ones that give us the best risk reward opportunities, high and low of the day. Closing price are my major levels. Keep it simple, traders, 1% better every single day. This happens every single week. Keep it going, keep it growing, and may the markets go with you.